thing for the people to accept. What was it was being said that was so tough on them that they would reject even with these miracles in front of them? What was it that Jesus السلام, was telling his people? La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. What does that mean? Well, if you've been around the Arabs, around their family, and they get children, you know this word la all the time. La, 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 la. And now you know what it means. I don't have to tell you, though. No, no, no. I saw that. Ilaha. Ilah is the word in English, God. Allah has no equivalent in English. There is no equivalent for the word Allah in English. So we substituted the word God with a big G. The same way the translators did when they translated the Hebrew and put a God with a big G or a God with a little G. And please, I'm sorry, but can't you be more creative than that? Because when people are talking, they don't have any way to show you the big G, little G. And they'll be like, I was talking about that guy's little God, this little God, and then big God, and then what's that? That doesn't make any sense. And when you start a sentence, you have to start with a big G anyway, so how do you make a distinction? The word Allah comes from the root, but it's unique because you can say Al-Ilah, that means the God. So Allah does not mean the God. Al-Ilah means the God. al that's the gods. al the gods. But the word Allah, coming from the root, means about worship. There's one part of the understanding in Islam called Tawheed al which is the monotheistic understanding of worship. And that's from this word, Allah. Allah cannot be made plural. The word cannot have two or three or four. And the word Allah cannot have gender, male or female. Can't do that. Now, right away, somebody could say, oh, man, please, I got a translation of Quran right here, and it says, he is Allah, Allah, he is this, him, his, it's all over the place, masculine, and this is only out of respect. It's only out of respect because Allah does not have gender, not he, not she. Not like anything in the creation. Lisa kamitli shayin wa huwa samiyun basir. Means there isn't anything like Allah. Nothing. There isn't anything like Allah. But He is all hearing and all seeing. And that's not like us, is it? Is it? Can you see everything? Of course not. I can't even see everything in the room. I mean, if I turn around, oh, now, oh, but now I can't see you. Oh, but it, you know. And as far as hearing, well, dogs can hear more than we hear, don't they? Uh, come on. So for sure, we realize that Allah is not like creation. But now the other one might say, hey, I found in the Quran it said, we, our, us. What about that? What kind of boy is that Allah and his cabinet members? Is that Allah and his parliament? Is that Allah and his jama'ah? Is that Allah and the angels? What is this about? Well, the, the fortunate thing for us is English has the same thing. And that's the respect you give to someone because of their high status. Like a king or queen, when they make any decree, they never say I, they say we. We declare the following decree on this date, on this place, like this. So they use we, our and us. And to help you with the English, I'll digress for a moment to show you something. When we speak to people and talk to them directly, we don't treat them the same as we talk about something else. If I said, these chairs over here, these chairs, those bottles over there, they are nice, those chairs are lovely. I use the word are because it's plural. But if I have something by itself, this camera is a nice camera, rather small, aimed at my stomach. <laughs> it's okay. But it is, and those are. Oh, yes, it's that way in English. Yes or no? No, it's not. Because when I speak to you or about myself, I change it. 
I speak to you, and you're one person, you're single, any of you brothers single will make God for you. That's a joke, you're supposed to laugh. <laughs> ah, that's better, much nicer. Okay, here we go. But seriously, a person by themselves, you just now caught it, okay. A person by themselves over here, and you're saying to them, you is my friend? Well, from Egypt, maybe you'll say that. But, <laughs> <laughs> or you say you are my friend. Oh, and when I speak about myself, do I say I is? In some parts of New York, yes we do. But other <laughs> can we say I am? And this is that royal status that we're using. Okay? So I, I said this because this is the message. This is the message. You have to know who is the law. This is his name. And it's an amazing name. It's talking about the center of worship. He's the center of worship, not plural, and not having any partners whatsoever. Perfect name for the perfect God. Yes or no? Yes, of course. And by the way, it's the name used by the Jews and Christians. Huh? What did he say? No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Well, I'll prove it to you. When you go into a hotel, Check in the hotel, put your bags down, go to the bed, there's a little table with a lamp, and you pull out the drawer. What's in there? Not the other pages, somebody already beat you to that. But the Bible is still sitting there, isn't it? Open it up, it's placed by the Gideons. And let's go like this one. Ooh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aha! Look! Right there! <laughs> Translation into 27 different languages Urdu, Tamil, Spanish, Mandarin, Chinese. But in alphabetical order, the first one is Afrikaans language, which is similar to German. Number two, Arabia. Oh, let's see what it says. It says it right there. Because they took the verse from John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Look what it says in Arabic. For Allah so loved the world. Whoa! Why it says Allah? Huh? Because that's the Arabic word for Christian's God. It's the Arabic word for the Jewish the same way. And if you know what I said, talk to the people at the Gideon department about the translator. And if you have a chance, has any, any of you ever seen the Bible in Arabic? Kitab al -Muktas. Anybody? Have you seen it? Page 1, Genesis. 17 times Allah, 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 Allah. So this is his name. And now the messenger of Allah we're talking about tonight, Isa, his name wasn't Jesus. That's an English word that didn't exist even a thousand years ago. The word God did not exist a thousand years ago. The word Jesus did not exist a thousand years ago. The word Muhammad did. The word Allah did, those existed. But anyway, to come back to our main subject, what about Jesus? What was his message? He was telling the people, you have to worship God alone without partners. And I am his messenger to you. And they didn't have a big problem with that because they wanted the Messiah. Because the Messiah to come to them at that time was going to lead them to victory, defeat their enemy, and they were imagining they were going to overthrow the Romans and take over the world, which they said is rightfully theirs because they are the chosen ones. They were very ready for that. And by the way, that's true. The name itself, Yahud, means guided. Allah chose them and gave them guidance. He did. Not all of them accepted it, but he gave them this great favor. Everything was rocking along pretty good. Nice. It was nice. They were happy with him. So much so, you read in the Bible, it says anyway, that they were putting down those palm leaves on Sunday, on the first day of the week, putting down these palms, and they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. They're happy come riding in on the donkey, coming in, and then... What happened? 
How come three or four days later they want to kill him? What happened? Read it in the Quran, chapter 61, verse 6. Verse 5, first of all, talks about Moses. Musa alayhi salam, to my kaum, my people. My kaum, his people. And he said to them, I am the messenger of Allah to you. Huh? Tell him what? La ilaha illallah. And the next verse, Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, he said, and I'm the messenger of you. To, from Allah telling you the same thing and and he said something new a prophet to come after me poor is Ahmed then, hey, no you will be die you have to do it you're the messiah you have to give us the victory let's go kill some people you think I'm lying wait wait a minute some people talk about Islam spread with the sword. Have you ever heard this? Islam spread with the sword. Have you heard that? We learned today when we were over at the Carnegie Mellon University. As a matter of fact, the word Islam would not allow that. The word Islam, one of the meanings in there is this sincerity. And how do you force somebody to be sincere? Huh? You can't. So Islam can't spread by any kind of force or coercion, any, any type. It won't work. It wouldn't be Islam. It would be Islam. Get it? So it couldn't, but never mind. It does say in the New Testament that Jesus told him, now is the time to say it, call him by a sword. What? Sword. And I did not come with peace. I came with a sword. A what? So, now you know what our preacher told me when I was a kid, I said, why did he, he didn't come with peace? You always talking about Jesus came with peace, he said, he said, no, 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 you don't understand. When the people used to copy it, those manuscripts, it was late at night, their candles are burning, and they can't hardly and see, and somebody was eating spaghetti, you know, it's in Italy, and they dropped and, uh, spaghetti, but it looked like an S, and that's where they got sold. He used to say, word, I came with a word. Hey, that's pretty good for shooting from the hip on the spot. I thought he did good, don't you think? Huh? <laughs> I mean, this guy could sell used cars like crazy. Spaghetti? <laughs> I forgot to tell you. There wasn't English anywhere. <laughs> they don't have any, any word sword anywhere in the Arabic or Hebrew or Aramaic. This is not... <laughs> this is not the word. They have Saif, they have Muhammad, they have Usam. Many words, but not that word. So I looked through the Bible. I want to see. I have a concordance for the Bible. And I looked through there. Oh, the word sword is more than 200 times. Oh my God. In the Bible. How many? More than 200? <gasps> sword, sword, sword. Take the sword and kill them. The sword. And it talks about the sword a lot. Even on the day when they're having this big altercation at Gethsemane, when Jesus has been praying and, oh, let this cup pass from me, even so, your will be done. And then what happens? They got the swords out there fighting. And uh, one of the chief's slaves gets his ear cut off. And then Jesus told him, put your swords away. Let's make a comparison. You want to? Let's go get the Quran. What page? The first time you find the word Quran is in which chapter? Oh. Hold on. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Oh, guess what? Now, which word though? Muhammad? Hussein? Saif? Well, any of those words? Not one. There is no word. Even though there are many words in Arabic for sword, not once anywhere in the Quran. Which religion spread by the sword? Never mind that. Let's come back to our subject. Yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna bring up the Crusades. Oops, <laughs> sorry. All the Inquisition, oh darn. <laughs> Just let it go. I want to talk about Jesus alayhi salam. Some people, when I came into Islam, they said, You turned your back on Jesus. You left Jesus. You left the religion of Jesus. And after I had read the Quran, I said, let me explain to you. 
I'm closer to Jesus.